Hey, good morning, folks. This is Mark Hall. Hey, this is a continuation of my nuclear medicine explanation of exams for patients. I was a nuclear medicine technologist for over 23 years, and uh, this is kind of how I explain these uh, exams to my patients because the doctor's offices uh, generally don't uh, explain what takes place or how the exam is going to work and I don't know how many patients I've had say well I didn't know I was going to have to do that so this is uh, just to kind of let you know what you may have to expect uh, if your doctor orders a nuclear medicine liver spleen scan okay uh, first I need to let you know that I have a little bit of a stammer and I have to collect my thoughts uh, and I rub this often, uh, nervous energy or something. Uh, I had uh, a couple of years ago something happened that kind of affects, I have to collect my thoughts and things. But anyway, this is how it went. Uh, I'd have a patient come in, they'd notify me that they were up at the waiting room and I would go up and get them and get them back to where I could discuss with them uh, in private what we're going to do um, due to HIPAA laws um, you know and, and just general respect for the patient you know. um, in the medical world it seems like you go to a hospital or imaging center and you become a number uh, you're not allowed to be treated as a human being anymore <laughs> but um, if your patient, or, and I'm sorry, if your doctor orders a liver, spleen, nuclear medicine study, you're going to be taken to the nuclear medicine department and you're going to be given an injection of a radioactive pharmaceutical called a radiopharmaceutical. Uh, for the liver, spleen, uh, nuclear medicine scan, you're given a, a radiopharmaceutical, typically uh, technesium 99M, which is the radioisotope that tags is tagged to a uh, sulfur colloid, sulfur colloid, C O L L O I D um, particles. And when you're injected with this in the vein in your arm, it goes to your liver and your spleen uh, for imaging what the technologist will do is give you the injection and then they wait 15 to 20 minutes uh, for that injection to localize into the liver and into the spleen and uh, then they take you in and they take pictures of your liver and spleen they do pictures uh, planar pictures well let me back up here um, they may give you the injection with you lying on the imaging table so that the doctor can watch the blood flow uh, go to the liver and spleen and that helps them determine uh, any area that's not receiving any blood flow or uh, the areas that are receiving blood flow uh, and that imaging uh, session if they do a liver blood flow uh, it only takes a couple of minutes and then they'll have you go sit in a chair and wait 15 to 20 minutes because that's how long it takes for the reticular endothelial cells to uh, soak up that injection and sequester it, uh, which sequesters just mean hold it in the liver and in the spleen. Okay, once the 20 minutes has passed by, they're going to take you in. They're going to lie you back down on the imaging table. Um, there are several different types of nuclear medicine cameras. You have single head and dual head cameras, and you even have three heads and multiples. But um, They're going to take you in, and they're going to get what's called planar static images, which means they're just going to put this camera in front of you and behind you uh, if it's a dual head and they'll take a picture they'll move it around to a, your right front and your left rear and they'll take a picture they'll move it around and they'll take a 
right side and a left side and they'll take an image and then they move it around to your left front and your right rear and they'll take an image they'll also get an image of uh, your anterior view or your front view and they'll take a piece of uh, lead or a lead marker that has uh, it's like a little strip and it's got holes in it and those holes the spacing between them is known and they will put one end of that uh, marker at your xiphoid process which is right down here at the tip of your breastbone and they'll run it along your right side ribs what's called the intracostal margin and they'll tape it in place and they'll take a picture what that allows the radiologist to do is they can take a, a micrometer and put it on this from hole to hole and they can measure and they can tell uh, the size of your liver. Uh, if the nuclear medicine camera and computer is synchronized to the reading software that the, uh, let me adjust this here, that the radiologist is using to look at your images, they can digitally measure that uh, marker or measure the organ and tell how big it is. Okay, what they're going to get pictures of is they're going to get pictures of the uh, liver and spleen, and they can determine uh, between the two um, if your liver is swollen. Uh, the term is hepatomegalia or hepatomegaly, and then uh, or if your spleen is swollen and enlarged, which is splenomegaly. But as a fancy doctor terms, and I'm just going to say the liver's enlarged or the. I need you to hold on just a second here. I got to catch a phone. It's not holding. I'm sorry about that. I'm back. Okay. Um, quick little phone call there. Um, let's see. Where did I leave off at? They did the planar static images at all the angles around the body. And uh, that basically is a liver spleen scan. And the doctor will take a look at that. And what they were, can determine from that is uh, if there's any abnormalities of the liver. Uh, they can assess the size, shape, and position of the liver and spleen. Uh, they can look and see if there's any masses in the liver or spleen. They can uh, determine the function of the liver, how it's working, uh, evaluate the liver for uh, acute or chronic liver disease. Um, they can uh, identify that the spleen is working properly. And uh, they can also see um, If the liver is not functioning correctly, uh, your bone marrow tends to pick up the function of it and they'll see bone marrow on the pictures and they can determine how things are going there. So, let me think a minute. I'm going to pause this while I think, take a look at some notes. I'm back. Um, one other thing that they may have you do is after your initial liver imaging is done they may have you come back a few hours later and they'll take another picture and that is when they're in evaluating uh, um, a liver hemangioma which is a collection of blood in the, in the liver and it shows up on the pictures um, one other type of imaging that they may do is they may do what's called SPECT imaging and that involves a SPECT camera and SPECT is S-P-E-C-T and it's single photon emission computerized tomography and what that allows them to do is they can get a, a 3D view of your body and they can do it as a film and make it spin around and they can use that to localize uh, any tumors or any hemangiomas or anything like that they can see 
by spinning that image uh, is it located to the anterior or the front of the liver is it located to the posterior or the back of the liver is it located on the right or left side and uh, spect imaging can help them quite uh, uh, often but it's not always ordered or it's not always done it depends on the facility that you go to again this is not medical advice you need to get that from your doctor and uh, a lot of times they don't understand this they know what it's supposed to give them as far as an answer back so you may need to call the radiologist at the facility that you're going to have this done at or at least a technologist and they can help explain the protocol all right this is Mark Hall you take care of yourself be well and I will catch you on the next uh, series or video on nuclear medicine uh, procedures for the layman and I'm going to put a link to a blog post when I get the blog post written and uh, it'll be down here at the bottom and if you want something that you can just print out with you you can print that out and take it with you or show it to a family member or whatever you may want to do with it okay folks take care of yourself Mark Hall signing out